There's a number of things that people can do to help Hood Canal and the dissolved oxygen problem. One is if they notice a problem, if they notice a fish kill, if they notice an algae bloom or something that seems relatively large, is to call into the ecology hotline number so that somebody can come out and check it out. And people that live in the canal or visit the canal frequently are the ones that are going to be able to determine if something's unusual. And that's what we need is a lot of eyes and ears on the canal that can see little changes in things and report it to somebody so that scientists can come out and look at it. The other thing is just, you know, when you take your pet down to the beach, don't let them, you know, go to the bathroom on the beach. Make sure that they're, you know, using the facilities and you're picking it up and, you know, looking at your septic system, making sure when you mow your lawn, if you're lucky enough to have a waterfront property that you know you're not blowing the grass clippings into the bay because that's going to help rob the oxygen out of the bay. So little things that people can do, putting in the sink screens to help the nitrogen there, um, you know, washing your dock with a little um, elbow grease and a stiff brush instead of using um, toxic detergents can also help, especially if it's over water. Growing shellfish in your beach, um, you know, little things like that will help a lot. And if everyone does a little bit, then we'll have a lot. With septic systems, it's just one fundamental thing that people have to understand is that maintenance is a lot cheaper than repair, and that if they get accustomed to an operation and maintenance program on their own septic system and they know where it is and they know how to handle it, then they can avoid some really horrific costs in the future. And there can be very, very simple problems that that don't cost that much, like a maybe a pipe or a baffle or something is broken, and that's not very costly, but you won't know about it unless you keep up with your maintenance on your septic system. And by finding that problem earlier on, you might avoid having to replace your whole drain field instead of just replacing a single pipe or a distribution box or something. So... We'd like to encourage people to catch the problems sooner than later and, and hopefully save them some money in the long run. One of the most important things uh, to do before you harvest shellfish, either recreationally or on your beach, is to call our shellfish hotline. It's a 1-800 number. Uh, we have information on there about biotoxin closures, and that will include uh, a paralytic shellfish po poisoning and domoic acid. We also have information on there. Occasionally we have an emergency closure uh, due to high bacteria levels, maybe due to a sewage spill or something like that. So it's important to, to call the hotline. If you have livestock, um, you can put up fencing so that they're not going in the rivers or the streams. If you uh, live near a stream or a river, you can plant vegetation so that runoff into um, those water bodies is lessened. We live in a watershed here in Hood Canal, and everybody in this entire area lives on the sides of a bowl. And the bottom of the bowl is right out here in this lovely picturesque shoreline. It collects everything that runs off our property during a rain event, be that failing sewage, be that dog waste, be that grease from our car, drips of paint, everything that we have on our properties run down here into Hood Canal. In the end, what we'd like to get from the science is to provide, um, help guide decisions that the corrective actions uh, will then be able to move forward so that uh, these issues we have in the canal, such as the uh, events, fish kill events, that uh, we can understand why, maybe forecast the when they may happen, and do things, try to minimize um, at least the human impact that we have on the canal, because as the population grows, people have sure discovered the canal, it's a wonderful place, and we'd all like to be able to um, have the opportunity to be here and, and make sure that it works for both the, the animals that are here, uh, maintain the water, and for the people. We need to make sure that this water is healthy, that our children are going to be able to come out here and go fishing and crabbing and do all of the wonderful things that we, we do and that we take for granted right now. I think Governor Gregoire and I uh, share the same feeling that, you know, we had such a great experience growing up here in the state of Washington and Puget Sound and Hood Canal were part of that. And we don't, we want to do our part to make certain that future generations can enjoy these incredible bodies of water like we did.